Hello and welcome to another Doctor's Assistant 1 video. Today I'm doing a review of the 13th Doctor Sonic Screwdriver. Um, I feel like the last Sonic Screwdriver I ever reviewed was the War Doctor Sonic Screwdriver or the uh, 12th Doctor Sonic Screwdriver. But yeah, it's been quite some time since I've reviewed a Sonic Screwdriver here on the channel. Um, you might be thinking, what the hell, this is super late. But honestly, I feel like... As of as of times gone on with Doctor Who since it came back in two thousand five, I feel like the more the show's gone on, the less they've brought out the Sonic Screwdrivers. Comment below if you feel like uh, you agree with that statement. I don't know, but it might just be me. I don't know, but yeah, um, yeah. I guess this gives me an opportunity to just talk about the Sonic Screwdriver design for Jodie Whittaker, um, sort of. Uh, Altogether, really, because I've not really talked much about the Jodie Whittaker era of the show in in on the channel. Even I'm probably the last sort of era of Doctor Who that I've openly talked about in the new series. It's probably the Matt Smith sort of era, really. <laughs> I haven't talked much about Capaldi or Jodie Whittaker's era, but anyway, yeah. Um, honestly, yeah, I'll be honest. It does look quite phallic. <laughs> um, you know, it does kind of look like a something you would get from Ann Summers but what I was gonna say is that um what was I gonna say I was gonna say I do like I really do like how she builds the Sonic Screwdriver you know and it kind of feels like uh the end nubbin bit this sort of crystal kind of reminds me almost of like a kyber crystal from like Star Wars you know um and that and I like the hilt as well, like th this bit as well, because again, that kind of reminds me almost of like Camp Dooku's sort of arched sort of um, lightsaber hilt. Also, as well, Ventress, Ventress, even uh, the sort of Sith assassin sort of character, who again is from like Star Wars Clone Wars. So yeah, ironically, quite a few Star Wars design the sort of things or things that make me think of Star Wars when I think of the Sonic. Um, but yeah, I just I don't know I. Yeah, it'd be cool to get something more sort of polished and refined. But that would be cool if she could maybe in Series 13 or maybe even, God forbid, depending on your personal preference of Jodie Whittaker, but if she stays for uh, or until Series 14, it'd be really cool to see maybe her upgrade this Sonic Screwdriver or maybe, you know, her experience over time makes it possible for her to then make a, a, a sort of Sonic Screwdriver 2.0 or 1.5, you know, and then a 2.0, you know, sort of Sonic. So maybe the next one would be a little bit better than this one. And then the the last the one, the third one she has would be the best one. But as a sort of play toy, it's okay, I guess, or sort of prop even. You know, you press this button, it just lights up with no sounds. What I was going to say is that I think this is one of the newer models because this came out with the three packs, uh, the three pack action figures from B&M that I bought. Uh, I got this Sonic as well. So I'm assuming this is the most recent model, which might mean that it's, for lack of a better term, the least in, uh, sort of feature heavy because usually with the Sonic Screwdrivers, I often find that the first one they release is the one with all the bells and whistles, and then as time goes on, they keep re-releasing the Sonics, and then just getting rid of uh, some of the features, which is a bit annoying. And then, yeah, it does do that sort of noise, and then it's very sort of bright, sort of gold colour, which emanates down at the bottom bits of it, which is nice, you know. I guess the design, much like with the Matt Smith, the, uh, no, not Matt Smith, the sort of David Tennant, Chris Eccleston, David Tennant one, it kind of, much like that Sonic Screwdriver, it feels like part of the TARDIS, you know, which depending on your personal preference might mean that you don't like this Sonic that much, because again, I'm not that fond of the TARDIS interior for Jodie Whittaker, and so this Sonic doesn't do a lot for me, as I say, the main thing I do like is the fact that it's very sort of cobbled together, that's the main aspect that I like, and maybe the crystal, because again, it does kind of go with the crystal sort of thing of of the ship and all the TARDIS this round, this time round, um, and as well the crystal, as I said before, kind of reminds me of like a kyber crystal. Like I honestly feel like this is like a, a lightsaber hilt, and then there should be like the rest of the beam at the top. But 
I don't like the fact that she overuses it in the series, and I'm not too fond of the fact that this one in particular doesn't um, spin the crystal around. But uh, if you double press that, that's how you do that bit. It kind of makes it flash and sort of like as though she's trying to scan something, but it's not working. You know, you can pretend to be like, oh no, it's not. Oop. Oh, and then there's a scanning noise one as well. And then if you do, yeah, it's not fully working. Why isn't the door opening? Sort of thing you could do, I guess. And then this one just, I don't know, this one just, if you just sort of hover over this one, it usually just makes the, the thing light up. But it's not doing that right now. That's, yeah, typical. Uh, but yeah, it's just sort of silver with all these sort of grey sort of wash and different sort of indentations on it. It's alright, I guess. I mean, if you, obviously the person you're buying this for is massive, sort of 13th Doctor fan, then it's a bit of a no-brainer, but otherwise you might, it might be a bit of a pass for, for other people. Um, I can't remember how much I paid for this, but yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, comment, rate, and subscribe.